acrobatics with the Nika. Cronus and I snuck up towards one of the drow leaders who was in a conversation with one of those mind flayers again. And after quickly taking out the drow, we soon discover the Drugar and the other drow that had been quiet and not really doing too much other than staying around working. We found out they'd been taken over by more of the Fortunate enough to quickly take them out without too much of a rocket. Skybor, unfortunately, I was too far away to really see what it is it did. He just went limp for a second. From where I was at, I thought he was dead until we got closer and saw he was still breathing. We didn't really know slapping him didn't help. Pinching him, trying to get him to wake up wasn't helping. Anika and I put our heads together to try and figure out a way to help him. We remembered the at the Mike and its cake that a few of us had made us feel a bit better. So we thought maybe that would help him. But unfortunately, we only had a small bit left. So we unsure if it would work or not. We gave it to him. We helped him chew and swallowed it. He woke up, and he's saying he's fine. But I think we need to keep an eye on him just to be safe. We don't want to have another Robin on our hands. Well, short after that, we... Well, Anika and I, we disguised ourselves as Drow. Anika disguising herself as a kid Drow that was super cute, reminding me of my sisters and my little brothers back home when they were young. Come on, Faye, don't get distracted by how cute the halfling looks as a child drow. <laughs> and I disguised myself as the male drow we killed. We had Wolfram act as our muscle, drawing the handprint on his armor, while Laura and Skybor acted as our new slaves. I feel horrible for the way I treated and yelled at them, especially Lorna kind of forcing her on the ship and locking her to a chain gang, essentially. I'm going to have to apologize later. Hopefully she'll accept it. Meanwhile, Cronus clung to the side of the ship, stealthily waiting for a signal to strike. Anika started bothering some of the slaves to see whether any of them were acting unusual. A few of them responded, which was good. And while we were on board, we found out many of the slaves apparently get flayed before they are brought up. The term when those brain things take over their bodies. I mean, anyways, the captain called me over to the edge of the ship where Cronus, with a little help from yours truly, quickly dispatched him, then we took down the other slavers and freed our friends, as well as Tanir Vandry, from whom told me not much Minzo is left, only three houses remain. House Bonre, House Vandry, and to my horror, those freaking pricks of a House Fane. And oh look, one of House Fane is here. Just right now, what I need in my life one of these guys here. Uh. Oh, well, at least he had good information of what they do with the slaves. Speaking of which, how are we supposed to help those down deck in, in the cages? They say they've been flayed, but there are others in there that are plain they aren't. We can either free them and risk more brain things attacking us, or we give them to the Sahujin who have been taking these sacrifices and allowing for safe passages for the Forgotten Army. Or, Plan C, I like this option, I think the others do as well. We disguise ourselves as members of the Forgotten, kill the Sahajins, and ruin the relationships the two groups have developed. And then, hopefully, that will cause a strain for the Forgotten, limiting their supplies, weakening them. 
Oh, Elastray, Lady of the Night, watch over us as we continue trying to get to Minzo, or what's left of it at this point. That's awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. That's so awesome. I love it. You're very welcome. That was great. Yeah, I really do appreciate that you guys do this and have fun with it, because... I played with a couple groups and no one's done anything like this and I really like it. Um, so that's going to take us back to where we left off. Uh, you guys are sitting, uh, or sorry, you guys were talking about the slaves. Uh, I will give you a little bit of time if you guys wish to talk about this a little bit further, but you guys are heading into a storm about um, in your direction. Uh, it's pretty much a direct hit um, because you guys have three hours, but in order to kick, you can do one of a couple different things. You can spend the three hours, take a short rest before the storm comes, um, but that will probably affect your uh, readiness for the storm. Um, or you could probably uh, suffice to give three people short rests in your party and still be, uh, make decent preparation for the storm or everyone prepares and gets ready for the storm. I mean, a short rest would give me a couple of my spell slots back. A short rest wouldn't do anything for me, so I can help prepare. I can help prepare, too. I'm going to meditate for a short rest. Okay. Skyboard, Skyboard. you want to take a nap? I'm fine. Continue smoking. Oh God. Okay. Do you want to break the mop, or am I going to do it? I think. Would you like to try another one? <laughs> I go and take the broom from from Skybor. I, I drew a crap from another broom. <laughs> <laughs> I firebolt the broom. I make another. <laughs> Wait, like, hey Skybor, do you know how to tie knots? Oh no! Hang on. Let me uh, look at my character sheet real quick. <laughs> uh, and my character tie knight. Uh... No. No <laughs> what? Cool. Let's learn, and I'll show you how to tie some knots and help pat pat hatch things down. Come on, and I'll take him by the hand and start doing that. Do you join her, Skyboy? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So you guys still have. So, you, so two people are taking short rests uh, on the way to the storm, uh, heading towards it. What do you What do you guys want to do before you get there, or is there anything specific you want to do or discuss? Um, Lorna looks at Cronus with confusion on her face. Uh, it'll help me fall asleep. I've seen you use this before. I'd rather not kill him. It's not going to kill him. It'll just help him fall asleep. How much do I believe this? Are How you trying to well, this? You could do an insight check to see if you believe him, or uh, you do a, let's see, intelligence check. Huh. Oh, okay. Are you, are you, are you withholding information there, <laughs> Cronus? If nope. you're trying to hide I mean, it, you know it will help see? him fall asleep. <laughs> I'm not hiding that fact. Okay, do a persuasion what? then. <laughs> You're right. You're not technically lying. You're just admitting the truth. <laughs> <laughs> what, do, what do you want me to roll? We just Persuasion. found the D D's chloroform. <laughs> yeah. So he, you're absolutely right, Laura. <laughs> it won't kill him. You, you've seen it enough, but you know it's not like a, a sedative. It's not a Nyquil. Yeah. We gotta Let's, create a magic item, Nyquil. So. I, I, I take Cronus's hand, put it back, and like close his hand. 
It's okay. I'll just knock him out with my fist. Yeah. Alrighty. Who, who are you planning on jumping? <laughs> so- <laughs> Skyboard. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. Guys, I, I can knock him out if it need be, but let's see if he can actually learn how to tie ropes first. <laughs> and then at least it'll be useful. I, I think he needs to take a nap first, though. I mean, he could use a nap. So why not just ask him to take a nap? <laughs> hey, Skyboy. He has made three brooms. I feel like I feel like we know what he wants to do by now. Fair point. Maybe. I... Hey, Skybor. Yes. Don't you think it's time for a nap after your fight? What fight? Exactly. You don't even remember anymore. It's time to take a nap. It's bedtime, Skybor. Come on. Yep. He uh, he goes into the fiddle position on the uh, the deck and tries to fall asleep. <laughs> Um, uh, uh, that uh, works. That, that, um, that would work. Can I, like, shove him into a corner and put a blanket on him? So he's, so he won't trip over him? I assumed he was, like, by the side of the ship anyway. No, he's uh, dead center. Of, Tyler, are you, uh, are you okay oh. if they move you over? Are you okay if they move you uh, over into a corner of the ship for you so they don't trip off? I mean, yeah, they can do that. Okay. Yeah. He's back where he last started. <laughs> <laughs> At least okay. it's clean. That's, that, that is true. Yes. Now, uh, before he wakes up, hide the damn mops. Fuck. I mean, I toss them all you give me to... But I keep mean, one. If you give me ten, Why? If you give me ten minutes, I can, I can take him downstairs with, without much effort. Just, he's fine there. Plus, yeah. he may be useful in the storm. He if he's be. not distracted by a freaking mop. Yeah. All right. He'll be good. Cool. Okay. So, uh, so you know, as you're you're going. In this direction, you you know you hear the waves and the wind ahead, and uh, the boat is kind of rocking and um, normal creaking. But you just start to hear it. It's starting to rock more and more and have more sway, and you, the boat is really just kind of tw- twisting and turning as it's um, the waves kind of pick up. Um, sorry, I get this open. Uh, you hear. Uh, Zakiel, uh, shout over at you, like, hurry up, we gotta get this ready. This is gonna get really, really bad soon. And then, uh, who's trying to drive the ship? Are you guys letting Tanir try to drive the ship? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, let me go ahead and pop their character sheets open, too. Sorry. Um, so, and then as you guys are shouting and trying to, um, uh, run around, tie things, the last minute things down as you guys are right about to enter the, the edge of the storm. Uh, you start getting pelted with uh, some raindrops that kind of increase in frequency, and then uh, the storm really starts to start dumping buckets on you. Uh, the, the ships are going really, really high um, up, and then they're just dropping several, several feet below down these waves. Um, and the boat is just really having a hard time handling this, uh, this kind of weather. Um, so, what we're going to do is we're, you guys are going to try to make it through the storm. Okay. So, mm-hmm. uh, you guys are about nine hours into travel right now um, when this starts happening. So, uh, during the first hour, you guys are running around and you're just trying to take the boat. If you guys have anything specific you guys would like to do during this, let me know. Um, kind of like other things, I kind of like to do this in pairs uh, and just kind of see how things go. But everyone's welcome to participate. Okay. I'm thinking a stronger buffer person pair up with a not so strong and buffer person. Potentially. Uh, I mean, I think 
you and Wolfram are the strongest and the buffest. Yeah. I'll look over my shoulder at her. <laughs> I said strongest. <laughs> Someone might go over, but overboard. I'm just saying. Yeah. I figured you were more flippy floppy. Or not flippy floppy, but flippy flippy. Can be wrong. I am nimble and strong. Yes. Fair enough. Looks can be deceiving. Yep. So, I don't know, do we want to do that? Oh. It is a good plan. Yeah. Because, I mean, if you guys have to grab a rope or something, then you may not be able to. Yeah, and I'm kind of small. Yeah. I can do a lot of things, but still small. Yeah. Okay. So, pair off like that, then? Yeah, also, someone should keep an eye on Skybor and eventually wake him up. Yeah. Jeffrey, keep an eye on Skybor. Yeah, I, I imagine Skybor, if you'd want to be awake, you could be awake because this is getting really bad weather. It would probably wake you up. Alright. Uh, but that's your call. You will stay asleep. Um, so the storm really starting to go um, really bad. And uh, so some of the supplies that are on the deck that have not been completely tied down are start to shift in weight and you start seeing some of the wind really catch it and pull on the ropes until one of the ropes snaps at you with some of the equipment and rations so you get to tied in and starts going towards the edge uh, of the boat uh, whoever wants to react to it they are welcome to um, Wolfram will try and grab the rope to tie it down Okay. Go ahead and try, let's say, I guess a strength check, because you're trying to grab it and just kind of fasten it back. There's not a lot of dexterity to it. So, yep, he's trying oh. to grab it. Oh. oh no. And um, as he's trying to grab it, though, uh, the rope just uh, completely, with it being soaked, just slips right through his metallic hands, and um, the rations and spies go off to the side of the boat. Uh, what are, let's go ahead and do one of the other two, or one of the pairs. What were, what are you doing, Anika, and I think it was Anika and Lorna? Sure. Why not? Yeah. What are we doing? Power team. Well, uh, you know, just what, what do you imagine that you guys would be doing to try to help get the storm? Are you going to be just trying to stay on top of the supplies? Do you want to try to Check the the any like the the sails to kind yeah. of collapse those so they don't just kind of tip you over. Or I, I yeah, I was thinking maybe yeah collapsing the sails, making okay. sure they're tied down properly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so you guys uh, start collapsing the sails um, a little bit and just tying things down a little bit with the strings, but uh, two of the ropes that uh, control the sails. Uh, start flapping in the wind for, uh, rapidly. Uh, go ahead and make a acrobatics uh, check. Ooh. See if to okay. avoid uh, being hit by the the ropes. I was trying to see if they had a deck save too. Uh, Laura, or Anika, do you, are you trying to help too, or is it just, just Lorna trying to grab the ropes? Or, I'm sorry, avoid the ropes. Oh, no, I'm helping. So, go ahead and make an acrobatics. Oh, you already did. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. Okay. So, uh, the, the ropes are snapping around um, really bad, and then one gets really close to your face, Lorna, but you just barely dodge out of the way. Um, you do see one of the ropes and um, it hits, ten, um, I'm sorry, not Tanir, uh, this hits uh, Ezekiel and he gets uh, slapped with the ropes. Um, and he Ow. 14 points of damage. Um, those are mean ropes. Ow. Yeah. Um, sorry. Before what's I go that? ahead. Uh, disadvantage on ability checks. That includes the skills, yeah. 
and yes. well, saving throws, and yeah. Give me a second. Oh yeah, I you're got exhausted. Uh, aren't you? Are you exhausted from? Yeah, I went into a frenzied rage on land. Gotcha. Okay. And we haven't rested uh, yet, so. so. Oh wait, but you actually have advantage on dex stuff because of do I? danger sense, right? Oh shit, I do. So it was a straight roll. I've played a barbarian before. <laughs> you're good. Um, Perfect. So you're fine. Yeah, it's an effect straight that roll. I can see. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Fuck yeah. Perfect. Um, so, uh, so you do avoid the ropes, uh, but it does look like Ezekiel took a nice little crack from one of the ropes that was flying and whipping around rapidly. Uh, you guys have kind of move a little bit further into the adventure or sorry, into like the, through the storm and you're probably about two hours into it now and uh again the the hands are kind of rapidly running around trying to take care of things are did you guys unchain the slaves on the deck or are they still chained oh no me and lorna unchained them okay so yes they're all uh running around and you guys are trying to help them uh, maintain the ship, uh, Cronus and Skybor. Why don't you guys go ahead and make uh, some an acrobatics check? Acrobatic. Okay, so you guys are running around and trying to make the end. Uh, you see Skybor and Cronus um, really kind of slip or, slip on the deck for a minute, and then they but they kept they quickly catch themselves and pull, make it look like they intended to do it all along that way. And uh, they keep their they keep their posture. Uh, the other hand... You went quiet. Fail. The other hands fail. So, um, you see... Let's see here. Yeah, so you see one of the deck hands slip and just kind of uh, crack his head. Uh, against the deck as he smacks it on the floor. And what is that? Shit. Ow. And so he takes uh, two points of damage. Uh, so a couple of the hands are getting hurt right now, but you guys are in about two to three hours now and through the storm. And again, the lightning and the wind is just getting uh, more and more so uh, crazy. Uh, you all of a sudden hear Tanir kind of shout, out from the back of the boat, shout, man overboard, and one of the hands um, have gone over the side of the deck. Shit. Shit. Can I toss a rope? Do you have a rope on you? I'm pretty sure. Then, yeah. Yes, I do. So you, Wait. Will, you can do whatever you do. I can actually... I can cast Tinzer's floating disc, and he can... Grab on it, and I can bring him back up on the ship. Okay. I will burn the spell slot for it. Okay. So, are you like placing it? Can you and you can move it, or so how you just move it? Yeah, it, follow, it follows me as long as it remains tw within twenty feet of me. And it can ray rise as well. Do you hear me? Sorry. Hmm? Uh, it can move up slopes, so I assume from the back of the ship it can move up. Or at least give him a stable ground to gra grab hold of the rope. Yeah. Um, it can't rise. It's, so you give him a flat, like he's standing in the water right now, freaking out, because Again, these waves are really, um, really high, and so he just starts kind of going. It starts sloping, almost like a surfboard, up and down the waves as the boat's kind of also getting um, tossed around the ocean or the lake. Tossing the rope now. At least he's stable enough to grab it. I'm gonna toss it. Go ahead and make an acrobatics check. Okay. Or our strength. Well, you you tell me how you're trying to. Are you trying to like do it fancy? Are you just trying to throw it as far as possible? I I think it's as acrobatics because it takes a little bit of pursuit. Okay. No, I can do that. I can do that. 
So you throw it, um, and he reaches out, and he catches it. And if you guys want to go ahead and start trying to pull him up, uh, I go ahead and just make a strength check for whoever's trying to help you. I'll help you. Oh, wait, did you do that acrobatics with disadvantage? No, I, oh, yeah. Mm, that was not a save. So, Dean! You're good still. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, now you and Corona start yanking and pulling the rope up uh, as you guys uh, get everyone back to uh, onto the deck. He's yeah. sitting there soaking wet, uh, trying to catch his breath. Uh, he's thanking you both, uh, you, well, you all, for um, saving him. Um, he's just kind of shaking and trying to catch himself and get back to his uh, duties as the boat's kind of in a big shithole right now. Um, so, again, you, so after this, another hour or so goes by, and uh, more of the uh, equipment and stuff that's on the deck starts coming loose from the ties, just from the twisting and um, bowing. And one of the ropes snap as well. This one's in the back where uh, Faye and Tanir are at and kind of driving the ship. And <clears throat> one of the, the, the ropes snap and smack Tanir in the head. And he lets go of the rope and falls down. Um, and the boat's uh, steering wheel just starts to go. Uh, spanning I grab hold. Direction. Okay, go ahead and make a strength saving throw. Or, I'm sorry, a strength saving throw. Yeah. Or strength check. Oh boy. You can do it. Not 20. Come on. You can also call out for help. Or help. you're welcome to convince me. I mean, I'm just going to throw checks out there, but you guys are. Yeah, this would be a strength check. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I'm just imagining you're grabbing it or you. <laughs> Seven. So uh, you grab it and it just kind of yanks you with it, um, but you are able to eventually get it under your control, but not after the damage has already been done. You kind of look forward after you kind of get some bearing on the ship's uh, direction again. Um, you're kind of turned around to some extent, but you notice that a few of the uh, uh, supplies that are near you have also come undone with that immediate kind of shaking and jerking of the ship losing a changing direction real quickly. Um, you also go ahead and make a perception check, Ray. Oh boy. Come on. Perfect. Why was the net going on that? <laughs> Well, that's, that's good. So not only do you notice this, though, but because you're being so perceptive, you do catch out of the corner of your eye that there's a wave that's because of the Boken turn, um, it is now perpendicular to the wave coming, and you know that if you don't turn that boat soon, it could possibly tip you guys over. Uh, um, so help, you... help, help, help. <laughs> Borna, Wolfram, get over here. I need help fixing the boat. Okay. I will run over there. Okay. Wolfram. So go ahead and make a strength saving throw or a strength check. Athletics would, I'm sorry, athletics would be fine. Okay. So with uh, Lorna and Anika and Faye, or Fenir's down for the count, uh, you guys start turning it. Uh, and if Anika will allow it, I think it's fun to imagine that Anika's just kind of holding on to the handle and it gets pulled around. Mm -hmm. Once it yeah, goes and I'm assuming like I ground. jumped up to grab it and then all of a sudden I'm now on the ground. Like, oh. <laughs> on the other side. Mm -hmm. yep. So uh, you guys are able to correct its course. It still is hitting the, the wave at a, such a severe angle, but you guys really recovered um, from it being way worse. So you guys break over the top of that wave coming, and then you start shooting down uh, about 10 feet into the next lull of the next set of waves. Uh, at that point, on the steep uh, decline, I will need a deck save from Wolfram, uh, Skybor, and Ronis. Okay, um, so I'm not rolling good for any of these guys. Um, so Cronus, 
uh, the, the the slaves and the other characters on the boat are fine. Skywar, you're fine. Wolf, you start to slide on this deck um, with the sudden change in your center of gravity and uh, the drop of this, uh, the or the climb of the boat into the next set of waves. You're going to start slipping and you're going to fall on the deck as well and hitting yourself pretty hard against some of the uh, crates that are on there. So go ahead and take 1d10 of damage. So a little five points of bludgeoning damage uh, for Wolfram. Uh, anything um, that you, uh, Skywar, Cronus, or uh, Wolfram that you guys are currently in the middle of or think what want to do during the storm? Well, I uh, I written down on the uh, chat that Skywar went low deck and he went to sleep. You walked under the deck and went yeah. to bed? Yeah. Oh, uh, my bad. Then you uh, did not have to make that deck save. Well, no, you did make the deck save to stay in your bed. <laughs> <laughs> it was an unconscious deck save. Yeah. Uh, yep. Uh, well, from say he did the uh, same thing last session. Well, you guys were on top of the deck getting the boat ready for the storm that was coming. So... Um, Let's see here. So Skywar is down there. Uh, Cronus, anything you want to do? Uh, I'm just going to keep an eye on the ropes on the front to see if I see any of them that might come loose or any, um, like any crates or anything. Okay. Um, so again, you're so you're running around the deck to check on things. Uh, Storm does look like it's getting a little bit better. There's still a little ways to go. Um, go ahead and do, uh, do an investigation because you're trying to look for any weaknesses in the ropes that must be in tech. So everything looks as good as you left them. Um, so you don't notice anything that really takes much more, uh, maintenance, but you are just going around checking the supplies in the boat. Uh, about five hours into the storm now, it's finally starting to see some break of light. Um, and... You, I'm sorry, Anika, you said you were checking on the cat. Uh, go ahead and make a medicine check. Mm-hmm. Sorry, guys, I'm trying to do my best to read the chat, the notes. <laughs> okay. Uh, you are able to bring him to, to a certain point, uh, and he kind of grants focus, and he, he goes, uh, so we haven't sank yet. <laughs> nope. And he uh, stands up. You're welcome. Up. And he's trying to help figure out where you guys are. Have we changed direction at all? Uh, Probably. Yeah. Oh, God. I mean, um, I'm trying to keep it as straight as possible, but I'm not good with ships. I'm good with regular you, things, but not this. When you went unconscious, I tried grabbing hold of the wheel to keep it right, but uh, unfortunately, I wasn't strong enough. Alright, we'll have to figure, figure out where you are. It's just really important in these waters to kind of keep your bearing because it's easy to get turned around. Um, he's going to kind of try to check for any kind of surroundings or landmarks as you guys are going through this lake to kind of catch him up to where you guys are. Uh, so about two more hours go by. The storm has finally uh, passed and everyone is just flat out exhausted, except for Skyborg, <laughs> who's been sleeping down below. Um, oh, Skyborg. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and um, everyone else, though, it's just, uh, you guys have just went through a long, long night of being just battered. Uh, the following people, though, that had to stay up through the night, or everyone had to stay up through the night, but uh the people that have gained, uh, have become exhausted from the night will be Wolfram, Faye, and who else to help their saves during the night? Let's say. I'm trying to think. I think everyone else successfully. Is that right? 
which saves were these? All of them. Oh, all of them. Just oh. through the night. Um, I didn't get head, if, hit in the head with the rope or all of them. Yeah. yeah, we didn't get hit or... <laughs> No, yeah, uh, everyone else did pretty good on their saves. So Wolfram has a point of exhaustion, and I'm sorry, so the other person's name already uh, it was Faye. Got a point of exhaustion. Uh, just keeping up through the storms and trying to take care of everything. You just guys are just not built for, or you just Faye, you're just not used to that kind of manual labor. And then um, Wolfram, when you took a spell and um, had struggle with some of the maintenance of the ship as well throughout the night, you guys. Finally, I've escaped the, the storm, though. Uh, about an hour or two in, um, Tanir is finally trying to get his bearings, and he's realized that you guys have lost some time in uh, when we got turned around during the storm, so they'll ha- you guys will have to make it up uh, and regain speed to try to stay on course. But right now, you're... you're pretty significantly delayed from where you would like to be. You would hope that you would be at the midpoint by now and you guys are a couple hours out from that point. So so um, you guys do have a moment here at the calm of the storm has kind of or has kind of met you and you guys are all soaking wet. <laughs> Nap time. Skyboar. Skyboar steps out from below the deck. Guys, we are on a boat. You're back to normal. I'm going to bed. Wait, that's not... Uh, I'm going to bed. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is a... Uh, what kind of bed are you guys trying to go to? Cause... One that is flat. I mean, are you guys trying to take a short rest, a long rest? Because the air is going to let you know that you guys are just a few hours out from the middle way, middle point. Okay, time Unless to take a sip somewhere then. Or and, you could ask, though, he could keep the ship uh, where you guys currently are if you guys want to try to take a long rest before proceeding. Uh, should we take a long rest, be better prepared? But they're probably I'm taking expecting... one regardless. Okay. Uh, they're probably, like, waiting for us, so... They By the way, Skyboy, you don't get a long rest during that, though. Because what stuff is going on? You were down below, so you had to do the checks, but you don't get a long rest from it. So, we're a few hours away from the Swahagan, right? Yeah. Tanir kind of thinks about where you guys are. He goes, I'd say we're probably four hours out from uh, the uh, midway point now. I mean. So, take on. The ugly fish man, and then go to bed. We might have to do it like that. Because we must need one of. We could always rest here for like four hours, and then the people will sleep and can sleep for the other four hours while we're on the way there. We could do that. That's not too bad. Yeah. As long as nothing else happens. If the question lightness informed them of the storm. That is true. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so or just be snotty as hell and say it doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So four hour rest here, the people sleeping take another four hours as we go. Well, I mean, I think we can all benefit from a night, day, sleep, whatever time this is. Yeah. You guys what time are... Is it, is it dawn yet? Present. Yeah, let me... I'm sorry. I'm trying to pull the timeline. It's is it dawn the yet? Next day. It's definitely the next day. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so... I am good for a long rest, then. You guys are 14 mm-hmm. hours into your journey, but you guys... We figured out that the total travel time would be about 24 hours, but you guys had not even made it to the midway point. So uh, due to the storm, you guys lost some time. So you're 14 hours into your journey. It is about on surface time. You would have a little bit better bearing, but you know it's probably, or for just 
mechanically, it's about, I guess it's about 9 o'clock in the evening. So 10, 11, 12. So it's about 11 o'clock the next day right now. <laughs> okay, so sleep. Mm-hmm. Long rest. Yep. Sure. Okay. So who is going down below for the first four hours? Uh, I'm going to go take the rest. <laughs> I'll stay up. I'm used to having exhaustion, so. Um, okay. I'll, I mean, I'll stay up as well because I'm actually pretty good right now. I could use some spell slots, so I'll go take a long rest if I can. Spellcasters go to bed. Yeah. Skywar, <laughs> so, well, you definitely got a short rest through the night, but you can't you, know, you you know you can't go below deck and take a long rest during the storm, so. Between the storm, you don't get a long rest. Wolfram, did you need to take a long robotic sleep? Or not? All right, guys, come on. We I'll, need people to play the game. I'll, I'll you... go have a long rest then. I mean, he just needs four hours, if I remember correctly. Oh, it's not a trance, but it's basically. I need I six hours. Six hours. So. So we just really need to make sure. To me. I am. Well, I'm going to sleep. Okay. So the only people awake right now are Cronus. And the slaves, and anyone else? Skyborn? Skyborn? Skyborn, okay. Or did you want to take a rest for Skyborn? Uh... For your spell. I have not used a single spell. I was out <laughs> when that thing got me. Okay. All I used was my wild shape. That was all I used. Yeah, and you took uh, a short rest before that. Yeah, so I got so I got my wild shape back, but I haven't spent any spells. Perfect. I will take that long rest then. Mm-hmm. So, um, so Skybor and uh, let's see, so Skybor, Cronus, and uh, I'm so sorry. I'm forgetting someone who's awake. Is that it? Just Cronus and Skyborg? Yep. Okay. So Cronus and Skyborg, go ahead and make a perception check. Okay. Um, so time passes for the first four okay. hours, and you guys do not notice anything um, that grabs your attention. Um, you just kind of realize how much different the water is without being, you know, Drowned by the thunderstorm. Um, you guys have kind of stayed there for the first few hours, and the second half. Go ahead and make one more perception check to both of you. Sorry, I should have made both perception checks. But Skyvor, you do notice on at the on the last. Two hours of your watch uh, of the first four, you you could swear that you saw uh, one of the waves as it broke, uh, one of the peaks of the waves, um, another kind of fin that kind of came out that looked dark and um, similar color to the water, and then just go back under water and disappear. Um, that's gonna finish the first four hours. So Tadir is gonna look over to you, Cronus and Skyborn. Like, should I start heading towards, uh, um, heading towards the same direction? Yeah, I think that was the plan. So Tadir starts driving the boat forward. Uh, another uh, three hours pass, and you guys are approaching closer and closer. He goes, "Do you want to wait, uh, let them sleep in till the final, or till we get there, or uh, what do you guys want to do?" 
So right now they're at seven hours of sleep. You want the full eight hours, which is the original plan? Yeah. Okay. Um, you guys uh, keep going, and eventually uh, another four hours come, and then Skybor and Cronus. Are you, you? I imagine you guys are both keeping an active eye on the horizon. Has anyone come up in between that four hour, that second four hour period? Or was, like I thought, uh, Wolfram, I thought you only needed six hours. Yeah, so he's up there by then. Okay, so Wolfram. Skybor and Cronus, you guys are all welcome to make another perception check if you'd like. So Skybor and Wolfram, as you guys are kind of um, walking around um, up on the deck and just kind of staying busy, uh, you do see something off in the distance. Um, you see this humanoid that's kind of uh, bobbing there in the water, just out in the middle of nowhere. Um, as you guys approach closer, you notice that he is uh, um, actually sitting on top of what looks like this, uh, what you would normally, it looks like a shark, it's a giant shark, but it, it's, it's kind of more morphed with the underdark, it's, not, it's paler in color. Um, instead of dark black eyes, as closer you get, you notice this, uh, the eyes are more white and milky. Um, and you see this uh, Sahagan um, sitting and riding one of them. Again, his uh, his appearance, for those that have seen Sahagan before, is a little bit um, less green. They're more muted color. And um, again, eyeballs are more milky um, just from prolonged living down here below the surface. Uh, let me get these up for you guys. And he kind of sticks up his web fingers as you guys approach and making the universal sign for stop, essentially. Uh, at this point, I'm going to use my hearing of whispers to wake Faye up. Okay. All and right. I say it's, uh, I believe we're here. You might want to go ahead and get everybody else up. All right. Uh, everyone, it's time. Okay, and I'll take on my draw form. And I will take on the form of that captain. And Lorna's hair is even more of a mess. Is that fish person a uh, large creature? Yes, he is. Wow. He is a the shark he's riding is a huge creature and he is a where are you he is a large creature yep so does that count as a full long rest for us yes everyone that was resting got a full long rest okay. all right exhaustion gone spells are back spells all the rages but that's what the D100 rule was because, you know, it's not an accurate science how far away he knew you were from. I was like, if it's in the, you know, if it's one way or another, you guys will make it on four hours or not. Anything? Uh, so you guys are in disguise right now? You guys are pretending to be drow that were originally captaining the boat, correct? Yeah. And mm -hmm. And I'm assuming a couple of people are wearing the extra uniforms. Oh, yeah. I'm actually going to make my way right below deck waiting on the stairs, so I'm out of sight. Okay. Uh, you actually would not be able to do that, Curtis, because you don't know what's going on. Actually, you shouldn't have been able to tell Faye because you didn't see them. But that's okay. <laughs> I will say that you didn't alert them because you shared that information, but... It was too last minute for you to go below deck, though. Uh, what else are you guys doing? Any, so everyone, no one else decided to put on a, a uniform or anything. Uh, so oh, it's only Faye and uh, Faye. 
Anika and technically Wolfram because Wolfram had the handprint painted on his chest or drawn on his chest still, right? I think Lorna put on the uniform because it's not going to fit me. Yeah. Okay, uh, Lorna okay. put it on earlier. So she said we put them on. And well, how many do we have? We have three, but me and Anika can disguise ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we can change our appearance. So could I w- Sky I was Boar, Conus, we- and I put them on? Well, yeah, they're probably on if they weren't the above deck, deck right now. I mean, assuming that during the rest we had talked about because we were going to see them anyways, and we found the things, would we have put them on? I don't know. I'm gonna. I asked you guys a couple times what you guys are wanting yeah. to do between this rest. I, That's I, true. I'm gonna have to say no. I, okay. I'm That's not trying fair. to be a jerk at no. all, but I, I've kind of no. It's fair. Time. It's fair. I completely forgot about them. So, yeah. I also feel like I'm much larger than they are, so it wouldn't have hit me anyways. That's true. But uh, he doesn't. Re- he's not reacting to you, Skybor and them on the deck. He just seems indifferent. He's just holding his hand, uh, and making a stop gesture. Uh, Tanir is kind of trying to play the part because uh, he does remember you guys trying to. So he's just not getting too involved, but he starts to stop the ship. And he, uh, Faye and Anika, are you? It's who's up on the deck right now with uh, everyone? Is there, who's up top? I think we all are. Yeah, yeah I think we all are. I just wanted to check before I assumed I've been doing a bad job at that. So, uh, Faye, uh, or Tadir looks over to you, Faye, and Anika. So she goes are standing near him and says, uh, who wants to uh, go talk to him? They, they're not really chatty. Uh, what do you guys want to do? Uh, the other captains typically have not had long conversations with them. This is where we kind of dump the slaves. All right. Uh, I'll go speak to him. Okay. Uh, he doesn't talk under common. Do you? Do you? Can you speak Sahagin? <laughs> I do not. <laughs> no. Did the captain? Did the captain? No, they didn't really talk much. So he kind of just dumped the slaves where they uh, agreed to pawn. All right. Uh, as I go over there, how I look at everyone and. Be like, as soon as I'm back on deck, um, we engage. <laughs> okay. Let's see if we can talk to him from the ship. All right. I'll walk. I'll walk over there and I'll wave him. I'll wave at him. What's uh, everyone's passive? Uh, Fifteen. 17. 23. I need to update your tokens to show that because that helped me. 23. Uh, anyone of uh, anyone 17 or higher? Me. Uh, Wolfram, what about you and Lorna and Cronus? I'm a 15 perception. Okay, so uh, anyone 17 or higher? So Nika and Skywork, go ahead and make a perception check. Oh, I'm sorry, Lorna or Faye, what was yours again? Fifteen. So Nika and Skywar, go ahead and make a, another perception. Twenty-three. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm not scrolled down. I Damn. So uh, Skywar, at the corner of your right eye, you notice another fin kind of pop up out of the water and go down, and go underneath the boat. And Nika, out of your left corner of your eye, you see a shark uh, fin pop up similar to the one he's riding, go down and go behind the backside of the boat. Faye, yeah. I think we're surrounded. Oh boy, we are going to need a bigger boat. Start your crafting one. Oh my god, I was thinking of a name, and now I got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that changes things. Okay, um... we'll have to dump them. Yeah. Skyboard yeah. waves and says, Nice day for fishing, huh? Oh, God. 
<laughs> he doesn't respond. He just kind of reaches over with his trident um, and points um, at the boat and then points kind of to the empty water in front of him. I'm going to look at Anik and it's like, unfortunately, we are going to have to dump him. If they got us surrounded, we can't very well fight them in these waters. If it's just one. Yeah. Well, let's get the conscious ones to try and hang on. We'll try and rescue them if we can. Yep. Let's tell the others as well. Mm-hmm. And we'll go over and be like, Anika said she saw more than surrounding the boat. Unfortunately, it looks like we are going to have to dump them. We can tell the conscious ones to hang on, but that's all we can do. Yep. Yeah, I don't... As sad as this is, their lives are... Not right now. Not yeah. for the greater good. Yep. Yep. All right, so we will open the hatch and... Start using the green. Start using the crane. So you guys uh, pull. Uh, it takes a couple of you to you know winch it up. The slaves are kind of pulling, doing most of the heavy work to kind of pull off this ruse you're trying to imitate. Uh, but you, it does take uh, quite a few hands to get this up out the first cage, up out of the bottom. Uh, you notice that a lot of them are just kind of getting animated now. The, the, the inside of it is. Um, the ones that were kind of pleading with you before are now are really kind of screaming and some are, you know, telling you all to fuck off and we'll see you in hell and all the other kind of stuff. The other ones are pleading um, to save their lives. Um, and you, the slaves, uh, including Zekiel, because he's been part of this process, uh, guides the the uh, first cage over the water. And uh, there's a string the, that they tie around the pin and they he pulls that rope to kind of release the pin and the body starts uh, just falling into the water. Uh, you see one shark oops the one he's riding on doesn't do anything but you see one shark jump out of the water and grab a couple of the first ones that enter um, and then you see the rest of them just kind of start drifting down into the dark uh, darkness of water. Uh, the people that were screaming and pleading are, uh, uh, some of them are trying to grasp, some of them have lost their handholds and have uh, fell. There's eventually only one guy left just holding on as you guys are, uh, and then the Sahagan points his trident at him. And uh, a few seconds go by and you see this shark kind of jump up and grab the body and just take down his legs, leaving his upper torso connected to the cage holding on. Oh. Oh. And swims back down into the water below. He uh. points back at the buffet and was like, and points back to the empty water for for the for more. Okay, we gotta keep doing it. Let's open the cages before we crane them and get the conscious ones out. Let's all right. Let's we try won't it. Be able to. Hmm? We yeah, won't let's... be able to. Yeah, there's Why not, not enough time. <sighs> With how quick this is going. Then it... not everyone go above board. All right. Some work I'll... below. I'll stay on top of the deck. I guess. Who should we have go down? Well, I still look like a drow. Yeah, and someone don't... strong. We need somebody you to mean? talk to them, unfortunately. Actually, I'll oh, go down. No. Not really. We just can tell them to get the hell out. What was I'm that? sorry. What, what are you guys trying to do? I, hear, I, I couldn't hear you protest too low. Well, I said, uh, I'll go down below. 
and try to talk to him because Faye can just tell me what I need to say through the earrings. Talk to the prisoners? Yep. Our, yes. My plan as of right now is put another cage out open, but one that has less conscious people in it, and then try and get the conscious ones out before another cage needs to be dropped. Okay. I'll go down with him. Yep. I'm going to. Okay. We're lifting um, up a relatively empty cage, not full of conscious people. Letting them okay. out. And I guess we're trying to get out some of the others in a different cage? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. We're trying to game the system. So, what I'll need... This will be not with advantage. Actually, this will be a disadvantage because you guys, besides you, Lorna, Lorna, you're going to have actually normal, a straight roll on this. Okay. Uh, but everyone else will be at disadvantage to make a insight check. Everyone? Every, oh, I'm sorry, everyone that went down below to try to figure out who's mind flayed, who's not uh, mind flayed in the cages. Oh, do I not remember from last time? Oh, never mind. So, um, Cronus, you're having a hard time. The since you guys have dumped the first cage, the the people, the ones remaining in the cage, have become more active and animated. That something's going on, and they've not. They're kind of coming out of their comatose state. Uh, and some of, and several of them are trying to make cons- convincing arguments to let them free. Um, and they kind of start fighting amongst each other. Uh, Lorna and Anika, you uh, see this as well. Uh, it's really hard to make out who's uh, telling the truth and who's just trying to save their own skin um, and who's just the uh, uh, mindless thrall. Um, but between you and Lorna and Anika, you guys can make out that the group, you're not so much sure that it has more conscious people in the one, in the third, one of the three cages. But you can discern that it's a smaller number of uh, individuals in the last cave versus the one that's right there to the right side of the, to the back side of the boat. That one. Okay. So the back side is the more populated one. The front side is the one that's a little bit lighter. We'll take and the front one mm-hmm. and You're hoist that up. To- you're gonna dump the, or, the lighter load. Yeah. Whichever one had the. Yeah. The whichever one had the more. Because mm-hmm. that was the one with the non-flayed people. We couldn't you, tell. No, 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 no. You, you, you know that there's well, several flayed and unflayed in the big crate. Okay. But in the smaller crate, you're not a hundred percent sure. But you, uh, but there's a smaller number of people. Uh, in the the other one, but you're again about half and half that you're considering are might be played, might not be played. Um, also, just to just a little remember, recall from the last session, I said before these crates were ha- ha- I'm sorry housing about 50 slaves each. Um, so the full ones are holding about 50 slaves. You don't exactly know how many are played or not, though. Okay. Uh- so, from last time, there was the lady that had the name from the paper. Is she still there, or did we dump her? Uh, she's still there. Uh, she is going to be in the lighter cage, uh, the one to the front. Uh, she recalled the name. Uh, let me pull up the character sheets again. Um, she was from House Malarn, uh, that she said, and uh, she doesn't remember Thalia necessarily, but she does remember Verkill, that family name. Uh and let me pull up that gold sheet. Who actually signed that gold sheet again? I did. Yeah. No, no, no I'm sorry. Who was the who was, who was the signature that left off on it? It was. Uh... It was Vixna Malar. Yes. So I'm sorry. They recognized the name. They recognized Thalia a little bit, but they uh, more so were remembering the House Malarn and uh, that person. So, we probably actually want to dump the peg cage. Because mm-hmm. if you want to get people out, we need less people. And we need time. Yeah. 
So I'll start cranking it up with Wolfram up top. And Cronus and I will start trying to get the, at least Vixna and everyone else that we think is not flayed out. So you guys, uh, again, you all start hoisting up the second um, cage. Um, it takes a, a lot of more muscle on top because you guys have all gone down below. Uh, or Lauren, are you? Or sorry, Lauren, are you coming up the top to help uh, get it out of there? Um. Yeah. 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 As to not create suspicion, as well. What's that? Do not diversion. Suspicion, you know. Oh, suspicion. Yeah. I went downstairs. I did come back up. Nothing's happening. Okay. <laughs> um, he's again. He's pretty static in the uh, in the water. It's kind of. It could probably surprise a few of you that the you know there's all this blood in the water and the one the shark he's riding is not reacting like the other one um, is. Uh, and you guys eventually get the other cage over. Again, Ezekiel grabs the familiar rope around the pin that's keeping the panel closed and yanks the pin as it over water. And you see uh, about 30 of the them all fl flop in there, just mindless into the water. Descend. This time, there's about 20 of them that are fighting each other, but there's just not enough room to grab all of them. So several of those fall uh, screaming into the water. With, again, just a few more. Uh, hanging on this time than last time. Um, this time, with the other slaves trying to hold on, you feel a big uh, the the boat just shake like boom, like something ran into it, and the sh the crane shakes, and it's enough to rattle the last few off into the water. Um, this takes us back. Let's go ahead and go back to the surface people: Wolfram, Cronus, and Skywar and Fay. Did I miss anyone? Uh, Cronus is with me. Oh, I'm sorry, Cronus is down below. That's right. Uh, so Wolfram, Skybor, Lorna. Yeah, I'm thank missing you. someone. Hey, thank you. <laughs> what are you guys doing when you see this? Or what are, or would you like? I'm just uh, muttering in Undercommon. What was that thing that hit the boat? Uh, anything from you, Skybor, or uh, Wolfram, or Lorna? Uh, Skybor is in shock, seeing uh, those people being tear torn apart by the sharks earlier. So. Okay. Wolfram, are you, is there anything you like to do or say? Lorna? No, not that, no. Okay. Um, so back, back down below you, it's just you. Uh, oh, okay. You there? Hello? Hello. Uh, hello, is this working? There, there you go. Did you want to do anything up deck? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so back down below, we got Cronus and we got Anika with the last cage. There's about 25 humanoids in there. Some are making very convincing cases to let them out and please don't sacrifice. Uh, so there's some of them are kind of trying, like, they don't even know if you don't sacrifice. They've already gotten two, two uh, crates of slaves. Um, what would you guys like to do? I'm going to use the earring and ask Faye, um, how can I direct these people? Like, I need a phrase to separate them. Okay. You need a phrase to separate them. I assume they all speak under common. So I have no idea what to say to them. There are uh, a couple that speak common. Um, yeah. The ones that are a little bit more educated, but most of them speak under common, and the Sahagan don't speak under common. 
Let's take some of the edumacated ones. For sure. Alright, uh... The only thing I can think that might help is... Ugh, I'm trying to think how to phrase this. Those that are normal um, have them declare what house they are from if they want to live. Fuck you, Faye. <laughs> 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 oh, I just fucking let me go. I gotta pull the list of houses now. <laughs> I feel I thought, like two or three in the back pocket, and I say there's ten left, and you're like, I want to know each of their houses. <laughs> I mean, that's the only way if they want to live, they gotta declare their house. <laughs> I know it's my fault, but goddamn it. All right, I'm good. I got it. But how is he he's not going to understand the response? The... So, so the ones that are educated, uh, you know the one is uh, Malarm. Uh, the other two are claiming, uh, one's claiming Freth, and the other one is, call, is claiming, um, shoot, 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 uh, Avendar. Well, those are pretty names. What do they mean? There are different houses uh, in the Drow City. Well, they used oh, that to was be... that was me asking Cronus asking Faye. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, so I'll ask Faye. Be like, are there any names I should like instantly pull out or instantly push further back into the cage? Okay. This is all three three of the ten responded to you, uh, Cronus. If you spoke in common. Okay, so only... So, Cronus, how many responded? It would be three of them. Did and you say it in under common? Nah. I feel, I feel like I would have said it in common first. I don't, I think that's a really complex sentence to be relaying back and forth effectively. <laughs> yeah. Um, if three people have said it Free those three. All right. I guess we'll work to get those three out of the cage first. Okay. Okay. Um, so the three that you kind of uh, were talking with uh, stand off to the side of the cage a little bit, and they're just kind of looking at each other like, really puzzled, really scared, just trying to how you're planning on getting them out of there. The door? You're, you can pull the pin. That's, remember, it's a whole wall for the cage. Structural mishap. You're you're welcome to look for one. Okay. Oh, what do I need I to have roll? An idea. What what's your idea? Please have one. So, I'm actually going to um, tie the hands of those three to the cage. So when we pull the pin, those three will stay attached to the cage. You could probably get the rope through, but you won't be able to get your hands through. Also, they've dislodged them twice. But if they're tied to the cage, then they don't necessarily have to hold themselves on. Oh, I see what you're saying. True. And then, I don't know if anybody else can but I can use minor illusion to make the cage look empty. I can do that. We can do that. Mm, I don't think you can do that with minor illusion. Not very well. It's... 
Minor Illusion is a inanimate. It's not like a, you're trying to hang you know, on. It's bigger than a five foot space. What if you Minor Illusion one of them and I turn the other two? You could turn them invisible. The Minor turn... Illusion doesn't work that way. I'm sorry. I can turn quite a... I could theoretically turn three of them invisible, but, but that would be a lot. But I can for sure turn two of them invisible. I'm going to let you guys think about that right now. Uh... So back to the top of the deck, the the guy that's sitting there is just kind of bobbing there, and he's looking for he's looking at you, uh, Faye, um, kind of with an inquisitive look. Like, is there or go ahead and make an insight check, Faye, to see exactly what he's trying to say with body language, I guess. Actually, anyone that's up top can make this uh, insight check too on his body language, uh, which is Lorna Wolfram. Skywar and Fed. So, um, Skywar and Wolfram, you guys notice that he's just kind of like, are we done? Do you have more? It's kind of like that gesture, like, are, what, what else do you have? This is kind of not all we usually get. Oh, by all means, if you can lie, lie. Skyboy is going to walk on the other side of the ship, kind of out of view of the uh, this guy over here. And uh, I am going to jump overboard, but before I hit the water, I'm going to wild shape into a seahorse. A what? tiny, harmless little seahorse. <laughs> what? Okay. All right. I don't know what I'm you're going to be. I want to see what's, uh, what's around us. So you jump in the water there, Sky Warrior, and you see you're seeing these three gigantic, uh, huge sharks just kind of. Well, two of them are swimming around the boat. But you see the one that he's riding in; it's just massive. That's all you see right now under the boat. As far as I can go, seahorses are not fast. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, do seahorses have dark vision or dim I cast, vision? I cast dark vision on myself beforehand okay. so I could see anyway. Isn't that a concentration? He... Is that not concentration, both of those? Wild what? shape. Is... Uh, I think wild shape is just wild shape. Okay. Wild shape is a druid thing. Okay. Yeah, you see, you. I mean, you still see the the shark. It's a little bit smaller now that you swam away from it, but it's still huge. So, it's kind of that Nemo moment. And like, I'm a little thing, and that's not a little thing. <laughs> All right. Uh, Bay, are you here? Okay. She's up on the top deck. It's, oh. No, but like yeah. No. Bay, are you there? Are you muted? I'm here. Okay. Skyboard went off finding Nemo on us. Oh uh, boy. Uh, hopefully he doesn't find Dory down there. Yeah. I think that may be the least of his problems. Yeah. Um, yeah. We should probably tell Cronus and Anika to hurry up and get the cage going. Oh, wait. If they're not expecting one, fly. They are. Are they? Yep. They are ex they are expecting it to you might want to hurry up. Do I save two or three? How many can you get? Three. Three. Okay. Try for three, if not two is fine. Have we secured the three of them to the side of the cage? So you guys are able to pass through the rope through the little holes in the cage. Uh and uh, you're with common. You speak to the one that is able to talk to, or sorry, the educated one to, that they can, like tie yourselves up. The other, uh, more with it, 
uh, individuals look like they're trying to fight over it. Um, they kind of bat, uh, bicker back and forth. Um, and eventually the, the three do get completely tied. Like, we're going to make this quick, otherwise these other these other ones are going to pull us out of here. They're not going to survive. I'm going to kind of point behind them and, and go, basically in calm and go, what the hell is that? And then I'm going to cast Invisible and everyone looks away on the three of them. Okay. All right. These three are invisible. Uh, mm-hmm. The other seven turn around and they're just, again, they're trying to figure out where they are. They, but they know where they were standing. So they just start kicking, trying to kick the people that were standing in the center. So they are starting to do bludgeoning damage to those that you tied in the corner <sighs> of the cave. You guys ready? The rest is up to you guys on yeah. how fast you move on the cage dispersal. We'll All right, let's uh, do this. Yeah, as fast as possible. With yep. Me and Wolfram. So, just uh, so you guys uh, start moving the other cage, you get it hooked up to the thing. Uh, it takes a little bit longer just because of it where it was out in the boat. Um, you hoist it up. Again, stop me at any time, guys, if there's something special or anything that you want to do. Um, but then you pull the crate over and you open it. And the, the, again, they're shouting. And then the one before uh, shouting at you, cursing at your names um, as you pull the pin and they start falling into the water. The thralls kind of just splashing and descending into the darkness. Uh, the other one shouts out an undercommon at the Sahagan saying, they're trying to pull a fast one on you and bloop, 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 and down to the water. Uh, the Sahagan makes a weird gesture with his head, but then it uh, you know, puts its hands both down on the back of the shark and taps it once on the head. And the shark starts to turn away from the boat and uh, swim away along with the other one. All right. <laughs> Let's move fast. Let's get out of here. Wait, Skyborn. Skyborn. Yeah, we also oh, need yeah. to bring the cage back and get them. Also, out. bring the cage back. Yeah. Yep, bring the cage back. Okay. Who can Skyborn. talk to Skyborn? Okay. I lower a rope down. I, I don't know. I will uh, swim back up and uh, tw- turn into a. Wait. I should have checked that before. Wait one second. Uh-oh. Why don't you just turn back into a sky boar? Because this is more fun. Fair enough. Uh, I can't do it. All right, never mind. Sky boar. So you guys drop the... Uh, are you guys putting the cage all the way back below deck, or are you going to drop it on, on the deck? Mm-hmm. I would say put it back below deck so it's yeah. not in the way. Yeah, below deck. Yeah, okay. turn back and we'll grab the rope and get hoisted up. Okay. So below deck, you guys drop, you guys descend it back down below. And what do you guys want to do? All right, time to get him out of the cage now. All Should right, we have yeah. back up? Hey, Faye. Sorry, my dog was sitting on my foot. <laughs> oh, you're good. All right, yeah, let's uh, get him below deck and then uh, un- get him out of the cage. Yeah, you may want to be down here. Coming down. And all signal for Lord and Skyboard to follow if they want. It's same with Wolfram. Okay. Um, unless everyone's, anyone says otherwise, I'm just going to imagine everyone kind of goes down below to see the prisoners you guys save. Uh, Ezekiel is going to join you guys. Um, Tanier is going to stay on top, kind of maintaining the course of direction and proceeding forward. Uh, you guys are down there. You guys... Uh, are you dropping your concentration on the spell, Anika? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to wait and see. Are they gone? 
uh, they the are. other the other the Sahagan and the Great Whites, uh, or not the Great Whites, the kind of sharks swam away as far as uh, what Skybor saw and what you guys saw at the surface. Okay, I'll drop invisibility as soon as everyone's down there. Okay. So you will uh, uh, release invisibility. You see a few or the three of them are all alive, um, but very sore, especially the one uh, that belonged to the house of Lauren. They're all just kind of down there rubbing their heads. Now, are you guys still in cost or disguise? Uh, how long has it been? Uh, this whole exchange has probably been at least an hour. Yes, or no. It, they dropped. Yeah, I'll drop it. Okay. So an hour has passed. You guys have dropped the skies. And then when you guys release the, uh, the invisibility, uh, you got, or the, uh, the so two of them that called Avendar as well as Freth, like, oh, isn't it great that Lady Bonray came to our rest? Of course. <laughs> we could have just fed you to the sharks. We could have, that's for sure. I mean, it's but not now you're alive. That's true. We owe you our lives. We'll we'll do as you command until we get to shore, and then we'll be on our way. On your way where? Well, not back to the Forgotten, and not back to Menzo. So I'm not really sure yet. Hmm. Well. But your company, I'm sure, is not going to be much better than my previous. Well, it seems to me you could go off on your own. But with how strong the Forgotten is, do you really think you'll survive long on your own? We'll just let them move back here. Except maybe with not quite so nice as Captain. Where is... Oh, go ahead. Whereas if you come with us back to Minzo, it'll prove that those that have been captured can be brought back. The city can can reclaim some of its glory, and there is a way to fight back. And perhaps, who knows, maybe your houses will be reinstated. And plus, you're less likely to become chum. They're starting with a little bit of cockiness and quickly went silent from all the very, very, very good points you all have brought up. We will serve you. I don't think we'll be welcome back. In. And Ezekiel kind of nods like, yeah, they're so fucked if they go back to <laughs> I think we're all kind of fucked when we get there, so we're all together in that. Well, let's see. Um, let's see. How long have you been captured? And I'll talk. And I'm talking to the the Drow from House Malarn. <sighs> they uh, yanked me out of the mines probably three days ago. And the other two will say we've been we were yanked out of the mines for about five days ago within, within the week. All right, so it's, you've been so it hasn't been too long since you were taken from the mines. How many are in the mines? Oh, hundreds. They're they're looking for something, anything that helps them in there, you know, and trying to break down the walls of Menzo. They're they're not that far off either. Menzo's dying, and they're just looking for that last little push to get the edge. This is obviously not the Malarn lady talking. This is the one. This is the the Freth guy. How long were you guys in the mines? Mm, well, you got to start some places. Some people are slaves. Some people are working their way up to the ranks of the Forgotten. Uh, we've been with the. Let's see here. Excuse me while I look at the timeline of events. <laughs> uh, about three. So three weeks. Three weeks ago. Uh, Lorna, three weeks ago, that was when we 
left after the werewolves, wasn't it? Or when we came back from the werewolves? Just about. We had a chance to go to Menzo then. Perhaps we could have stopped this, but then at the same time, the werewolves probably would have gotten worse. Yeah. Okay. We have to hurry up to Menzo. Uh, I think we're going as fast as we can. Yeah, with three houses left, it might be best to get the houses together and evacuate, unfortunately. Go to the surface. Well, If If that's the number we have, have the forgotten, we can't really fight down there. Because that's just a hundred minds. Who knows how many else there are? Hey, and the other... will kind of be a little bit like, well, don't count us out. We've got some of the biggest houses left in the city. Wow. That they is haven't true. been successful so far. What do they that want is... with Menzo other than the drow? What are you hiding in there? What do I want? No, uh... what do the Forgotten want? They, they can get want. people anywhere. Why Why Menzo? Well, if they are standing to oppose them, then they are not with them. And uh, so far, from what I can tell with these guys, they're just out to get as much power as possible and crush anyone that stands in their way. And Especially Voss and Quill. They are true assholes. The and only men- thing... The only thing I think we could do if we can figure out where Vosk and Quill are, as well as that female tiefling that was mentioned, if we could take those three out, maybe with the help of the three houses that remain, perhaps Menzo stands a chance. I mean, you take out the leaders, we essentially cut off their heads down here. Could this maybe... Red. Is this better? Yeah. Yeah, but mine's still on right now. You sound okay. Better? Much. Much better. Okay. But, uh, what if we tried to get them all in one place? Like, say, council meeting? Or, uh, hey, stop trying to attack our city. Let's talk peace. Or truce. I feel like getting their three most powerful people that we've met so far in the same room together to attack them is probably not the best idea. Fair. There's an option. It is an option. The other one is take them off one by one, but... How are we going to get them one by one? Now, we still don't know why they want Menzo other than the fact it's Menzo. I'm assuming there has to be some power in all of the kingdoms. Merlin wouldn't have left them otherwise. Antonier, you said my mother had disappeared, right? No. She's still there? She's still there. Uh, Arnis is there. Uh, or, I'm oh, sorry, who are you asking? <laughs> um, I- I'm asking Tanir because I remember I thought he mentioned my mother had disappeared and Julina was holding the seat. Gotcha. Tanir is still up, up top. Ezekiel's down there. Um, Ezekiel, from his memory, knows that the family still. Um, they cut out. Um, mm-hmm. Julina is primarily taking over all your responsibilities. All right, Tanir. Um... 
I'll talk to her when we get back, see what's been going on. Um, I'm going to go speak to Tanir. He was the one that gave some information last time I met. Because I could have sworn he said my mother had disappeared, too. Okay. Do you guys want to do anything down here? No, not really. Okay. So yeah. you're giving... Oh, go ahead, Wolfram. I was going to find a quiet place on the ship and ritually cast Divination. Okay. Uh, go ahead and throw that up in chat if you don't mind so, so I can see what that spell does again. Are you so? Um, I would just go ahead and spend either 25 gold because you're not really sacrificing anything right now. But you could ask a single question concerning a specific goal, event, or activity to occur within seven days. You don't have to a truthful reply. The reply might be a short phrase, a cryptic rhyme, or an omen. The spell is really good. Okay. Uh, so within seven, to, uh, an event that's going to occur in seven days. I'm going to ask my deity where to find uh, a stone giant encampment. The what? I'm sorry? I was worried that there were stone giants near Menzo. I was wondering if there was a direction I should head. Okay. Um... It does say to, <laughs> it, uh, there is a pause, and then you hear, uh, is it in the voice of your god? Be in the voice of an angel, it can be just a real, it can be a sign or something like that, like, oh, a book falls and it's off in this direction or something like that, I don't Gotcha. It's up to you, how you feel uh, yeah, that makes sense. Um, I feel like you guys work on your relationship with your deity before he actually is going to talk, talk to you. Uh, but you do notice that you hear some of the clanging of some of the different instruments and things that are hanging on the netting and the under part of the ship uh, hit and clang on the westernly side of the ship. Oh. Oh. Um. With the map, you did see the map before too, right? That uh, I didn't. Defense. So this way, or yeah, that way. So um, looking at, I mean, from your knowledge of the jar, I'm sorry. Did you say you did not, or did look at that map? I don't think I saw the map. Okay. Uh, you okay? You'd have to ask maybe to kind of get a lay of the land then, but you it did go off western, northwesterly. Uh, well, this is phase operation. I'll ask her where the northwest is. Um, the northwest? That would be from Menzo. Uh, which way would be northwest more? Yeah, I'm trying to show you. For some reason, it's be yeah, that's northwest. Yeah, so we'd have to head more that way. Well, Faye, knowing that information he shared with you, you know that's kind of leads more towards the tunnels and the roads that lead up to and within the Dark Dominion, the honeycomb uh, cavern-like structure maze that wraps around Menzo. Which would put us more where the Forgotten currently are. It'd be risky travel. Is there anything else you would like to do? I'm going to go speak to Tanir. Okay. You make your way back up top, unless anyone has anything else they would like to ask the Freth and the Avandar and the Malarm person. No. All right. 
you're back at the top deck, then, uh, Faye, and you see Tinger guiding the boat forward. He goes, oh, Lady Faye. He goes, I think we're only, uh, we are about eight hours out now, I think, till we get to the beach. We need to make decisions on where we're going to stop, either at the port, which I think is going to be pretty dangerous, or maybe try to find a beach somewhere. Probably finding a beach is going to be safest. I imagine the port is going to be filled with the forgotten. Or we take the port. We could go to the port, even though it'd be risky. We could take out the ones that are there. That would probably set them in disarray, wouldn't it? Sorry, so take the port and do what again? If if we take the port, there's going to be many members of the Forgotten there. If we take them out, that's going to hurt them pretty badly, having lost the South, having what happened in the South of here when we took the ship, right? If we take their I mean, yeah, it does make sense. We would be able to at least maybe secure our path way back to the boat if we are to try and make the trip back. Whereas if we take the beach, either way, I think it's going to need to be a group decision on what we do there. But before that, a few weeks ago, back when we ran into you, when I asked you about my mother, did you mention she was missing when my sister got was in my sister was taking my seat or or what? I... No, your your mother is still on the council with the absence of the other houses and stuff. Uh, some of the heirs have had to step in to kind of fill out. Um, the, to represent all of the houses that remain in Menzo. So right now it's your mother, um, your sister, Jelena, and let me pull up all these. I'm so glad I created these character sheets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then there's Halil and Zilvra, as well as uh, uh, Matron Jure and uh, Nadika. All right. We're going to have to get in contact with them as soon as we're in the city and make a plan there. But what do you think? Would you say, what would you prefer, us going for the dock or the beach? Faye, I will follow you whichever way you want to go. But... I think this has uh, been a rough enough journey. I think we need to go for the beach. All right. We and, and you guys have done things that I probably wouldn't know was possible up to this point. I'm more. I'm still concerned about getting to the beach. This has kind of been a a weird trip from the beginning. That's fair. We've. Never, never, we've never kind of traveled across the lake this much and had that light of a load before. And I think they slipped a lot of mind flayed into the last batch. Uh, this is really a heavy, uh, this is a weird cargo we just were traveling across. All right. I guess just keep our eyes peeled then for anything unusual. Um, I'll go speak to the others, see. If they want to go for the beach, which would be safer, or go for the docks. I'll come back pretty soon with the with, uh, decision. Fair enough. So I'll go back downstairs and gather everyone together. All that. Hmm. All right, well, we have... There's on the other side. We could either go to the dock, 
where there's bound to be lots of forgotten there. We could try and take it, which will hurt the forgotten, but it will be dangerous. Or we could try and dock somewhere close to one of the beaches and have a bit of a safer travel. See, port, you get right on land. We're not going to be able to beach this boat. And if we do, we're not going to be able to get it out. Which means yeah. we're going to have to take a small... We'd have to abandon the boat. Which I don't even know if we have. And we may capsize in that tiny boat into a shark-infested water. Because I don't know how close we can get this boat. That's fair. If we take the dock, we cannot hold it. The city is rather forgotten. Is the dock inside the city? No, it's no. not. Then I think beaching may be one of our better bets. It would give us away if the boat was found. Should be long gone by then, but if we continue northwest mm -hmm. into the Dominion, I can gain us allies. Powerful ones. What is that? That's incredibly cryptic. <laughs> it really is. This is me talking. But I think I think the dock may be a suicide mission. Yeah, that's kind of what Tanir was saying. He thinks the beach is our best option. Yeah. Ezekiel goes, have you guys thought about what, how you're going to go through the Dominion when you get there? Nope. Nope. The only we kind of just... I only know one part of the Dominion that's not under control, but it's not much a better option. What is it? It's through her den. Who's her? The... Lady of Webs. A spider. Um, so that? Faye would know this right away. Um, so Faye, if you want to share with the group, I imagine you probably will. Uh, but you know that the, the Lady of Webs is basically uh, a, a den of driders um, that all kind of work for the same uh, report to this lady uh, named Illustrate. Uh, Illustre, Illustre, which is probably a uh, unfortunate naming thing, so I probably should change that. But anyway, <laughs> the Lady of Webs, um, she kind of leads over the Driders that have been somewhat banished. You know, the Driders are banished, but they're still part of the Drow society in the sense that they're punished, but they still serve and they kind of live near on the fringe of Drow society in the city. So we can go through Dryders. If she'll let you through. Much... If they'll let us through, yes. Are but, there to uh... a powerful house? Offer them a place once more in your society. Also, for those of us who have no idea what Dryders are, what are Dryders? Um, well, spot, they're like, or are you asking in character? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> well, um, they're, they're, they were originally drow, but they were punished and subjected to a mutation that transformed the lower half of their bodies into that of spiders. That's, that's horrible. Yeah. Do you think we could convince them to help? They are still loyal to the city. So, so maybe. They actually may be a better plan than the council right now. Possibly. I mean, Triders are good warriors. And they wouldn't take much convincing to help save a city. Especially if it could 
possibly get them back in the good graces. And, you know, stop the evil army. That is true. We'll just have to... We're going to have to be very persuasive with them. Or just tell them if they say no, we'll go back and leave. That is they true. They don't have to let us through. We still do have but, the ship. But it is curious. Well, why why haven't the Forgotten gone after the Driders? No, oh, they're thought, snobby. Are you you're talking? You're including everyone under with? Oh yeah, yeah. we're like <laughs> we're just the only two talking. Yeah, because like they definitely have tried. But the Driders have been fighting them back. What did they, they try? They are. They have not outwardly attacked, but they have kept them from taking over that part of the Dark Dominion. Um, he will explain. Um, and just to clarify, their loyalty is primarily to, I guess, Loth, but they do still have some. What's the right word to describe it? But yeah, they have some allegiance to the city, even though the city kind of punished them. So, uh, but they are due to our Loth. They're kind of symbols to Loth. You know, I doubt the city would have thought of this, but this is the, not the best time, but it is a possible revolution time. That is true. Wolfram, you said you had allies down here as well, yes? Yeah. What was that? What was that? <laughs> Well, I was hoping more of the houses would be down here, but... Oh, they Over. might be. They just Barbara. may be in a mine. That is true. If we could convince the Driders to help us, and then with the help of the Council... And whatever happened, allies Wolfram was talking about. Yeah, whatever those are. If we can gather these three different groups perhaps we can make an assault on the mines it would be risky but it is decent odds plus if we can actually give the driders hope of returning making a difference it may be something your city probably never thought of and they are supporting loth mm-hmm well, the last time I spoke to a member of the Forgotten, they said they were trying to also overthrow Loth. The Driders won't oh, stand wow. for that. That just sounds blasphemous. It really does. How rude of them. Just for Anika and Wolfram, because they weren't playing with that, that during that adventure, <laughs> but basically the uh, the Forgotten were, you know, destroying and uh, replacing Loth worship kind of idols and stuff with, uh, you know, Forgotten paraphernalia, the Dark One paraphernalia, <laughs> wherever they could. Uh, they said that they told you was that Loth served the Dark One from now or now. But then you guys, uh, the rest of the group also met um, a, I have to look up the character name in the notes because that was forever. Salak. Salak uh, of Arai. Uh, and they they defend the Great Divide and their truth. Uh, like, like they come from that plane where, with Lulf and they kind of have a direct connection. And uh, they're saying that Merlin reached out to Wolf to that this was going to happen eventually, and that kind of this is what kind of the ruse they'd have to play out in order to get through this. Right. So in order for them to truly follow Lolf, they need to come with us. Right. That is correct. So. Oh, uh, Wolfram, did you want to elaborate on your friends that Anika asked you about? Um, I believe that if they are not 
taken already by forgotten with aid from Cronus, I will be able to secure the alliance's okay. allies and or dragons and giants and my people fought together. Dragons? If there are any down here, I don't know, but stone giants in any case would be of great help to saving the mines or the city itself. Task to convince them, however. They are a passive people. Mm. I must prove myself through iron and stone. Huh. There may be a way. You a said giants, to... yes. So I don't think Kronos will like it. But they remember what we found that he's kind of taken a liking to and hasn't shown us in a while. Wait, that ABC book that uh, he got? The little, the little egg. Uh-huh. What, what's that about the egg? It's a dragon Said, egg. And giants and your Wolfram's people fought with dragons. We have one. Sort of. Hatchling will not do much, but... It could spark an alliance? Maybe? Uh, Depending uh. on its color. It was a black uh. dragon egg. So I'm going to take a pause there and go to Cronus while you guys are discussing. <laughs> uh, that, so you will have a chance to continue discussing. Uh, Cornus, you uh, are up there for a while, just kind of relaxing, um, taking in the sights. Uh, it's pretty much a big ass purple lake with some waves and not a lot of stuff to look at, except for the occasional pillar of rock that comes from the ceiling down to the bottom and kind of connecting to the uh, ocean floor. You do, uh, after you spend about 30, 45 minutes out here, um, you guys have been traveling for, let's see here, since you guys left uh, the midway point, about four hours um, now, and you turn around and you think you notice uh, something pursuing you, uh, several little like, uh, humanoids kind of diving in and out of the waves, and you kind of as you're kind of looking closer into this, you see this kind of on the left side of the ship, the right side of the ship, and then eventually in the front of the ship, you see these kind of humanoids swimming alongside with the ship. Oh, fuck. Back to you guys down below. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, Cronus's dragon egg. Uh, totally nothing going on outside. Uh, totally nothing going on. No. But yeah, I mean, maybe if they're farther away, did we want to try and go to them first? And then work our way back here? I don't know. Because how I'm seeing it, beach is on the east side, potentially. There's the port in the center, and then wherever your friends are, Wolf Road to the northeast. That's probably not geographically right, but I'm very geographically challenged. Um, do we even know how far to the northwest we'll have to go? It was a very general question, and it was a very general direction. If held up, they will be somewhere within the Dark Dominion, perhaps staying within the... And 
a pilgrimage to find them on my own. You want to go alone? If I am wrong and have wasted your time, yes. It's risky. What do you guys say? I thought this is going to have to be in a group. By the way, Cronus, you do see these things coming more and more into shape now. But no one else. I don't think it will be bad to have them. I, I think we should go together. Because in the end, allies are allies. That is true. Mm -hmm. I just wish we knew just how far... Well, with the, uh, not the spider queen, but the webbed queen or whomever I know. So, uh, hey, Faye. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, Cronus? <laughs> Nonchalant, like, okay. it's going down. Um, yes, so Cronus, we what's are, up? We are surrounded at the moment. <laughs> you just hear Faye yell out a loud... Fucking Gwah! why? Hey guys, I think we're about to get in a fight. I didn't need that. We either. are surrounded. We're what? I will run up. Running upstairs. Let's go. <sighs> yeah, this is about parkour. Also, real quick. So many, how so many tall is the crow's nest? <laughs> what did you say? How tall is? How high am I next to the crow's nest? Why do you have to ask me good math Shit. questions? <laughs> you know I, why. The yeah. average mass, I would say, is what? 20 feet tall? 20 50? I don't know. I don't know. No. It's a uh, short me, mass. You could easily math. get down the mass in a turn. <laughs> That's yes, not you the could plan. shadow That's step down. That's not what I was asking. <laughs> You, I would allow you to climb down from the nest because nothing has happened yet. It's outright, but something's happening. Oh, I'm not down yet. He, he wants to shadow step down. That's why he asked the distance. I'm going to go ahead and let me clear this out. Let me go ahead and get. Um, this isn't start a battle, but I just for turn because I just want to know what everyone's kind of doing now. They're more sequential because things are starting to happen. So, um, hope when we get to the end. All right, so everyone's kind of already started acting. Um, I'll let anyone else that wanted to do something real quick before I let Mario kind of do something at this time. Does anybody have anything else they want to do? Hey, guys, I got to take my dog out real quick. Sorry. Okay. Uh, on my turn, uh, I'll just hold my turn until I get back, if, that, if that's all right. Okay. Yeah, so Tanir is starting to slow down the boat a little bit to avoid these... All these creatures are enclosing on the ship um, and just try not to hit in them and making things worse. And he's like, uh, guys, you better get up here. There's a, I have a question. <laughs> he shouts that to the rest. Uh, so, Cronus, anything you want to do? Uh, I would like that to be known that I am still up in the crow's nest waiting. Okay. Anika, what would you like to do? Run up the stairs. All right, all right. So you start seeing uh, some of the marrow uh, are uh, throwing these kind of, they probably look like they're made out of bone harpoons, um, and they're throwing them over the top of the, or the railing of the ship to pull themselves up. Uh, let me go ahead and do acrobatics. 
they don't have a client. That's unfortunate. Oh, that's the wrong person. Sorry. All right. So uh, several of them uh, miss. Uh, I'll just say, yeah, they have, with that shitty of a roll, they all miss their first grappling hook attempt. Um, but you also start seeing a few more pop up. Out. All right, Lorna, what would you like? Uh, I'm going to run up the stairs with my sword drawn and go into a frenzied rage. Okay. Nobody attacks a ship while I'm on it. And right. can she move to like the edge of the ship? So if they try and yeah, this is not combat yet. Yeah. This is like them trying okay. to come aboard. I won't go into a rage yet. Then, uh, if they do like, if where I'm at, if they try and hook on, can I try and like deflect it? Uh, yeah, totally. You can okay. make an action. That will be an aggress a pretty aggressive action, but so is them throwing a hook over the Yeah, deck. so, I mean... Just putting that out there. That's what Lauren is thinking right now. Okay. Skywar, what would you like to do, sir? Steps out from below deck with a very annoyed look on his face. That's it. Okay. And then, is there anything you want to do, Wolfram? Uh, my character should go. Here we go. Uh, these guys just come out of nowhere, attack our ship. But I, I think I'm gonna do a sacred flame. They, they, like I said, they have not truly attacked the attack. They're just trying to come aboard right now, forcefully. Uh, but, so you're, I mean, yeah. you're not wrong. You're totally in the right. I'm just. Oh, oh, no, I should attack them because they're attempting to board. Permission okay. to come aboard to kill you. Okay. So you're attacking one? Okay. Uh, deck save. He's going to try to avoid. And he does, but he still takes half damage. Mm. Uh, I think... He... No, it's a cantrip. Cantrip. It's a cantrip, nothing. so, yeah. Okay. So it dodges, it just goes as it hits the water. Um, we're, we're not doing full combat because I wasn't really doing the combat. Well, no, that's true. No, you, you attack. So that pretty much starts with combat. So yeah, what else would you like to do with your... Uh, Wolfram, is there anything else you wanted to do? Wolfram. Hello. I said he's not doing anything. All right, that brings us to Tanir, and after you seeing the the fireball, Tanir's gonna be like, "Fuck, get on the bassas!" And then Zakiel's gonna go run up to one um, with the other drow, and there the other slaves kind of go and grab some of the turrets, uh, the ones that you kind of saved down below, um, while the other slaves are still kind of trying to row and maintain the ship to maintain speed. Uh, Faye, it is your turn. Uh, she's not here. Um, no, okay, let's do it in game. Probably telling the captain to go faster. Yeah. Um, do you guys want to take a quick five minute break since Faye's not here and just run the bathroom, grab drinks, whatever you want to do? Yeah, sure. Works. Yeah. Is everyone going to take a five minute break and then we'll be we'll pick.
Finn, you're back yet? Well, while we wait, does anybody have any questions? <laughs> Can I go to sleep now? Uh, I think this is the exact no. opposite of going <laughs> to sleep now. I believe Skyball will have exhaustion, won't he? You did take a short rest. Uh, you, I gave done. you a short rest value over, over the long run. You did try... You won't get an exhaustion point from the night because you were trying to sleep. I'm just saying you're not going to get the full benefits of a full night's rest. Does that make sense? So, exhaustion. No, you're tired. You're st mm. You didn't take a long... Uh, I mean, if you want to take the point of exhaustion, I was just going to say, like I said, you get a short rest versus a full rest. So, if you want exhaustion, take exhaustion. But no, I'm not penalizing you with exhaustion. I'm trying to find the playlist. I cannot find it. What the fuck? None of these battle songs are working. It's weird. I'm back. Cool deal. All right, I don't know why the music's not working from YouTube. But we will make do. Is everyone? I have no. I'm here. We'll do a roll call. Um, there you go. So. Let's see here. We got uh, Cronus, you're here. Faze here. Lorna, you're here. Skyborn, are you here in Wolfram? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, approaching your ship are a bunch of, again, 
uh, marrow or some of these marrow fish like humanoids that are coming after the ship. They are trying to throw some hooks, harpoons over the wall. Your comrade Wolfram uh, fired a fireball at it or a produced flame at it, and it brings us to Faye. It's your turn. Okay. This is going to be fun. Uh, okay, this one right here, I'm going to place Hex on it for my bonus action, and then I'm going to fire two Eldritch Blasts at it. I'm sorry, I didn't see your ping. Where was it? Uh, the one close to okay. me, this one. That's what I thought, but just check it. Go for it. Okay. Oh, and I just realized I also forgot to roll for Jeffrey. Actually, wouldn't he be gone because of the long rest? You're right. And Jeffrey is gone. Has yeah. Yep. Jeffrey is gone. Never mind. <laughs> Even though he would have gotten last. <laughs> but yeah, this one is getting two Eldritch Blasts. Okay, uh, go for it. 14 is... 14 a hit, and 13's a hit. Ooh, those are bad rolls. Let's hope the hex damage is... All right, four more points of damage. That is not good damage. It shouts out an abyssal and pain. What does it say? Um, uh, you don't know. <laughs> I do, actually. I speak abyssal if I heard it. You're pretty far away. Okay. Just wondering. You could make a perception check to see, but it's never mind. I'll just tell you, it's not that, he's, he's just swear. <laughs> so, <Okay. laughs> so it's not that entertaining. Why would make you roll for it? That's stupid. Sorry. Um, <laughs> That's all I got. And I'm going to... Actually, I'm going to move back a little. Okay. That brings us to the drow. They are going to make an attack with the Belsa. Uh, the one's going to attack the one you attach, Faye. The one to... The, I'm just going to attack left... Uh, top left. Or, I'm sorry, middle left and middle right with the two Belsa. So, where is that? That's a hit. All right, two hits and two misses. Sixteen twenty five. All right, so the one top left takes 16, and the one that you hit, Faye, takes another 25 points of damage. Yay! Okay, that brings us to Cronus. It's your turn. Um, I'm actually going to pull out Wand of Magic Missiles. Okay. And I'm going to... Uh, cast the third level at the one that's been hexed and we've been attacking. Okay, now, do you... Have has anyone cast a dark fish on themselves in a while? Mm-mm. So this is dim light. So you can still see in dim light, but how far? It's just going to be disadvantage. Okay, so you can see it just... Everything's done with disadvantage unless you can see yeah. properly. Okay. Go for it. Well, there's no business advantage for this, so go for it. Or wait, you're standing here in the middle of that. You're not going to be able to hit the... You're want to hit the one next to... Yeah. You're going to have to move either to the side to look over into the water at it or something like that. I thought you still in the crow's nest. Oh, you are in the crow's nest. Go for it, sir. All right, so... Thank you, Skywalker. What's that, five rolls? Uh, two up. yeah, yep. So five D four plus five. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. 
So you uh, see an onslaught, and then all of a sudden your missiles go right into it, and he uh, goes down below the water. Anything else on your turn? I'm going to go ahead and jump out of the crow's nest. Okay. You're just leaping out of it, or are you climbing yes. down out of it? No, I'm just jumping out. <sighs> Fuck you, Cronus. <laughs> I'm going to find out how tall I'm at. <laughs> Man, I did oh. ask you how tall it was. So, it, like, it's probably at least like three or four stories tall. And you can assume one story is like eight to nine feet. Back in. I'm just going to say 20 feet because that's what I think I said originally. Huh? I don't think that's mm -hmm. accurate, but let's just. I don't want to tie up the game. So. I'll let uh, you know. My slow that's fall two, removes six. 35 points of fall damage. Oh, you, you have safe fall or whatever? Or what is it called? The one? Slow fall. Oh. All right, then you're good to go. Uh, Anika, it's your turn. Uh, okay. I'm going to move up here next to Lorna and kind of lean out over the ship. And I can see those two. Or these. Hang on. You can see uh, one, two, three on the side. The one on the, up north, the one right in front of you, and the one to the, uh, the two southeast. Okay. I'm going to... Are they above water or are they below it? They're kind of like diving in and out of water like dolphins to keep, uh, you know, stay in pace. Okay. I'm going to try this even though if I don't know if they can see it. Uh, what's the area for that? 30 feet? Which ones are you replacing it on? Uh, I'll probably place it on this one. Okay. If I can so, see them. The one in the middle back there. Should really change yeah, the color so of that in this water. Feet. That is going to cover all three of them. Yes. Good. All right, 30 feet cube. Yeah, mm -hmm. depending on where you're placing, you totally can get them. Um, I will just leave that square there. I don't know why I'm struggling to keep these. I'm going to close some of these. They need to make a wisdom save. Uh, one, one passed. Succeed. So the top one, the one close to you is going to pass. The other two are, are confused. Yeah, they're incapacitated for a minute, I believe. Now, okay. Yep. Uh, and then if I can with the free action, I'll just kind of shout out an abyssal because I heard them speaking that. Uh, leave us alone. <laughs> Okay, the most one of the nicest statements I think you've ever said in Abyssal. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> Small ends well for you. Anything else? No. That's all right, it. so the Marrows are all going to attempt their grappling thing again. Uh, I'm just going to do a harpoon attack. This is easier. All right, they all make their harpoon attacks. Let me just go ahead and do, do there's not like a climb check. Is that always strength then? Probably. Unless they're acrobatics and are like jumping. Okay, so here comes strength check. Okay. So five of them are able to get on board. So this one jumps up on board. 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 Two, three, four. This one jumps on board. But they use their action and everything to climb and attack, and I think that's fair enough. I'm not going to let them do anything else. Uh, one, two, two are out of commission outside, and there's two more that are still 
conscious, or I'm sorry, three more that are conscious that are, are trying to get on the boat still. Uh, that's going to end their turn. Lauren, it's your turn. Um, okay. You see these big, kind of slimy fish people appear on deck, and they're kind of moving snake-like, kind of almost like they are standing on knees. Um, kind of like a naga, I guess. Cool. Oh, kind of- um, look at Skybar. Plans have changed. <laughs> <laughs> they're in my territory now. <laughs> I'm moving there. Bonus action. Frenzied rage. And she is going to recklessly attack this guy. Okay. Fuck yeah. That's a hit. 16 damage. Okay. Uh, extra attack. She's going to attack this guy again. Okay. 15. That's a hit. Yeah. Their magic number is 13. Awesome sauce. All right, uh, that's another 14 hit point. Yep. And that's my turn. Okay. That brings us to you, Skyvor, sir. You really threw a monkey wrench. Whoops. Uh, actually, I was referring to the DM. Oh. Uh, I, I'm as ready as I'm ever for you, Skyvor. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you know what? Yeah. Um I'm going to put that what's that? Twenty foot radius? Uh sure. Yeah, right there. In this spot. Okay. Twenty foot radius bite growth. So it should be uh Give or take. I like that better than mine. I will uh, be. Um, okay. So on that, they have to make a wisdom or a saving throw to see if they notice it, right? Uh, they have to make a perception check. It's a, it only ha- they only take damage if they move in it. Any creatures that can't see the area at the time of the spell must make a perception check against the spell. Otherwise, they make a DC spell date to see. La, la, la. So they see you cast a spell, and so they know it's hazardous terrain. So there's no DC, they just, but they still take the damage when they move to the terrain. Yep. Every five feet. Okay. Got it. Anything else, sir? Uh, what is that? That's an action? Yeah, that's an action. Uh. I got no bonus actions. Yeah, that's my turn. Okay. Uh, Wolfram, sir, what would you like to do? Up here. And... Just inflict wounds on this one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. Seen the critic. All right. So you uh, you touch it and you just see its flesh and um, start to decay in front of you as it then falls. Anything else, sir? They've been hit. Uh, no, not all of them have been hit. You would probably know the top left guy took a hit. Well, no, you probably wouldn't know the top left one took a hit because he was over the boat when he got hit. So, yeah. And then? Okay. Tanir's going to stay on course. He's like, uh, guys? 
<laughs> and he's going to keep on the helm and keep trying to guide the ship uh, the, the direction you guys are heading. Uh, Ezekiel is going to take a shot at the one of them over the bow. Because he can't really turn around and fire at the ones that are on the deck. All right. And it brings us to Faye. It's your turn. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start moving to, towards Tanir with my movement. And I will, for my bonus action, cast Missy Step to end up right there. <laughs> okay. And yes, sir. Thank goodness that gets me right there so Tanir has some help. <laughs> and then okay. I'll take out my packed weapon and I will attack the mirror next to me. Okay. That is the first one's a miss, the second one's a hit. Alrighty. Okay. Um, anything else? That was bonus action movement in action. I'm good. Okay. Uh, the other two, other, or three of them are going to take a shot with their bows. One hit. For 19 points of damage. And that's it's going to your turn, sir. All right. Um, I'm actually going to move my way down to here, and then I'm going to use a key point and use a flurry of blows to do four attacks. Okay, go for it. This one right here. Okay. Three hits. So 15. 21. Oh, oh, I see. 15. Got it. All right. Anything else, sir? Um, no. All right. Nika, it's your turn. Let's see. Just for the heck of it, because I think it'd be funny. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'm going to cost Tasha's hideous laughter on this one. Okay, now that's a concentration spell. Um. Uh, Hypnotic Pattern is not a concentration spell, okay. and neither is Hideous Laughter, I don't think, but let me double check. Uh, hideous Laughter is a concentration. Hypnotic Pattern is not. Okay, Wisdom saving? Uh, yeah, mm, it's saved. So it feels something come over it, but it shakes it off as it's holding on to the harpoon on the boat. Yep. And that's my turn. Okay. So I'm going to resolve the ones uh, up top first that are in spike growth. They're going to shout down in an abyssal, like, you know, basically look out, uh, swim around, and they can't go fucking far. So they're going to go 10 feet on, on the deck and take 10. 44. Uh, two, 44. It's 2d4 per 5 foot. So, yeah, 44. 44. So they both take 12 points of damage as they move close to you guys. They probably should have chosen a different spot to jump on the boat. Okay, and I'm going to uh, get the other two, one, two, three a chance to climb up. Here they are. They're in straight. All right, and this one, how far can I move? So. Alright, as we get up, so he's gonna move this one, it's gonna climb up, and this one, it's gonna climb up. Alright, so 
So the ones that just climbed up, the one that just popped by Anika, and the one that popped up by Faye. No, I'm not going to say they're going to turn because they just used their action to climb all the way up there. And I, I just think that makes sense. Unless I'm playing that wrong. Dude, does climb take an action? Uh, I think it does. Let me check. Athletics. So, so yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's it's the, oh I'm sorry I should have done that. Well, he doesn't have strength athletics, so strength is the same. Um, so then they won't get a turn. I'm just, yeah, they use their turn to climb up. I always feel weird about charging someone in movement, but for NPCs it makes sense. So the other one, two, three, one, two, three, four can still make attacks. So the ones at the top are going to um, take their harpoons and throw it at the one drow slave on the one belt list up, and the other one at the other drow slave. Oh, wow. They missed that. One to one. Here it comes. Oh. Actually, let me see. What, what is the drow? The basic one? It's still like 12 or 13, isn't it? Fifteen. Oh, wow, that's that high. Okay. So the one does hit, and you see one of your drow uh, slaves that was on the ballista drop his uh, drop and slump over at, over the uh, ballista. The other one, the harpoon was right over. Uh, the one, so this one's coming for you, Faye. The other one's for you, Cronus, and the last one is for nope, that was it. For you, climbed up. So Faye, we'll do. Oh boy. Here comes a bite and a uh, harpoon. 25 hit. 25 is definitely going to hit. Shield's not so, going to help me there. But uh, I need him to make a dexterity saving throw as I cast Hellish Rebuke at third. <laughs> okay. He failed. So let's see... Alright. He is gonna be taking <laughs> twenty-three points of fire damage. All right. And I gotta um, make a and I gotta make a con save real quick for concentration on Hex. Hex is still up. That's good. Okay. You still take the eight points of damage. Uh, following up with that, does, do they get any saves each turn for the hypnotic throw or hypnotic patterns, or no? Only when you take damage or you drop concentration, right? Uh, it's not concentration. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you just said that. <laughs> yeah. Add comes trying for the duration. Spell ends on an affected creature if it takes any damage or someone else can actually shake it awake. So since they're kind of in there by themselves, they're just floating in the water. And you guys are still making distance ahead, so I'll keep that in mind, too. Uh, okay. It is your turn. You didn't roll against me. I didn't roll what against you? The attack. You said the wall. Oh, I'm so sorry. Here we go. Bite and harp. Hit me! <laughs> 19 and 25 hit? Yeah, it's a hit on both. Okay, 24 points of damage, sir. Oh shit, I forgot something very important. Nope, the soul is a miss. Okay, uh, anything? Uh, Lauren, it's your turn. So, uh, running over here, and I am going to recklessly attack him. Okay. Yeah. 27. Okay. 15. Those hit, hit. Uh, I'm going to attack him again. 20. Uh, that's 15 plus 24? Or no, no. No, sorry. 15 damage. 15 plus 18. Plus 18. Mm -hmm. Is he dead yet? Nope, he's not dead. Okay, bonus action. I'm going to attack him again. Okay. <laughs> right. Oh, fuck. That is a miss. Okay. 
Yeah, that's Anything my else? turn. Skyboard, it's your turn, sir. All right. Can I heal the fallen drow? Um, or is he like dead? Dead? Apparently, you throw. You could heal him. All right. I'm going to healing word him at okay. third level. So he heals 10. All right. He comes back to life and he's like, oh, man. <laughs> and then I want to go over to him and uh, I want to use my action to hand him a. Yeah, I want to hand him a healing potion. Okay. And that's my turn. Okay. Uh, that brings us to you, Wolfram, sir. Cast spiritual weapon and put it right there. Okay. We're uh, sorry. I'm looking. I'm looking for the drawing. Oh, there you are. Got it. Okay. There. Clear it out. Here, uh, we'll check spiritual weapon. Okay, so are you attacking or you got to roll for attack? Oh, just double check to make sure I can attack with it on this turn as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, yeah, on the, on the release of it. Yeah. That's it. That's the turn. Unless they have lower than 12 AC. Uh, oh, no. I'm sorry. I thought that was 13. Uh, nope, that is not a hit. I'm sorry. How is that? Wait a minute. 12 is not a hit. 22 is a hit. Sorry. So go ahead. Is that 6 from your Warhammer or from your spiritual weapon? From the Warhammer. Okay. Tanir's going to keep the boat on course. Uh, Ezekiel is no target, really. You can try to take a shot at that. And that's a miss. And that brings us back to you. Alrighty. The one next to me. Bonus action. I'm going to move Hex over to him. Or her. We don't really know if they're male or female. Okay. And then I'm going to stab it two times. Okay. Okay, let me roll the hex damage. And roll the... Let's me do the math. 12 plus 16 is 28. He's super dead. He's very much so dead. (laughs) <laughs> was he dead on the first strike? <laughs> uh, no. First strike would have been 17, counting the hex. Counting the hex? Yeah, he's yeah. Good. he didn't need much, but yeah, he was still up. Alright. Uh, that's my go, then. Okay. Uh, that brings us to the drought. They're gonna have no real shots left. Which brings us back to you, Kona. All right. Um, again, using a key point and another uh, flurry of blows, so another four attacks on the same one. Okay. Those are all hits. So 31 total, I think, is what it was. Uh, I guess you can't do multiple numbers, so... Yeah, 31. 31, then that guy is going to fall before you as well. 
Okay. Uh, anything else, sir? Um, actually, let me double check this. Um, I'm actually going to move up and be beside this one right here. That's my 45 feet, so that'll be my turn. 